It's uh, my pleasure to welcome you to the session three of the day in our last session of the Saturday, which is uh, on aortic disease. And it was curated by doctors Victor Nera and Neville Burke from Halifax. Allow me to introduce Dr. Uh, Victor Nera. He's an associate professor of anesthesia at Dalhousie University. He received his titles of doctor in medicine and surgery at the Universidad Averiana, anesthesiologist at El Rosario University, and cardiac anesthesia subspecialty at the Central Military Hospital in Bogota, Colombia. With the collaboration of the Queen's Sylvia Children's Hospital in Gothenburg, Sweden, he contributed to establishing the Pediatric Cardiac Surgery Service at the Fundación Cardiovascular de Colombia, where he worked as a pediatric and adult cardiac anesthesiologist and was chief of anesthesia in the operating rooms. He moved to Canada to pursue a clinical cardiac anesthesia and transesophageal fellowship at McMaster University, and after that, a pediatric anesthesia fellowship at the University of Ottawa. He also performed a master's in arts and education at the University of Ottawa. He is certified in advanced perioperative echocardiography through the National Board of Echocardiography, and he's currently a staff cardiac anesthesiologist and cardiac anesthesia fellowship coordinator at Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. It is our pleasure to have him here with us today, and we look forward to the talks curated uh, by the Halifax Group. Thank you very much, Marcus, for your introduction. I want to uh, thank you, the organization committee, for the invitation to participate in the 2024 ECHO course, and I will be doing the introductory talk from uh, orthopathies and TEE, and my colleagues uh, will go over more details about pathologies of the ascending aorta, acute aortic syndromes, and aneurysms and type B aortic dissections. I have no conflicts of interest to declare for this presentation. Our, job, our objectives are to review the anatomy and segmental classification of the aorta, identify TEE views and other imaging technologies for the examination of the aorta, to describe measurements conventions for the aorta, classify pathologies according to current guidelines, and present typical cases demonstrating the imaging technology, particularly TEE, to diagnose, monitor, and guide surgical uh, or interventional corrections. We consider this an important topic as there have been international guidelines published in the last two years that provide updated consensus recommendations for the management of aortic diseases. We'll focus on aspects pertinent to perioperative echocardiography. The aorta is considered an organ which originates in the aortic root and finishes in the iliac arteries. The main branches are shown in this picture and start with the coronary arteries the neck vessels, and uh, in the infradiaphragmatic area, important uh, visceral branches and ending uh, in the iliac arteries. Current guidelines recommend using the Ishimaru landing zones for the endovascular repair to describe the aorta, which is an important landmark, uh, which are the left carotid artery P6, the diaphragm, and all the major branches of the abdominal aorta. As with any organ, multiple pathologies of the aorta have been described, but we will focus on this presentation for acute, on acute aortic syndromes, aortic aneurysms. Three pathophysiologic mechanisms for acute aortic syndromes have been described. The first one uh, shown on the left uh, shows an intimal rupture that creates an expanding mid-layer hematoma, uh, which is the characteristic presentation of the aortic dissection. In the, in the middle of the screen, the basa basorum rupture creates an intramural hematoma in the medium layer of the aorta with its expansion in, and dissection and potential rupture. 
The third one is an ulcerated atherotomatosis plague that will produce accumulation of the blood hematoma formation in the medial layer uh, with the consequent dissection. Expansion of the false lumen can compromise the lumen of collateral vessels, producing malperfusion. This could be static, dynamic, or the combination of both. Transthoracic echocardiography is a non-invasive technology that can capture images of the aorta and its different segments. However, it has limitations depending on the patient body habit and the window quality. TEE has better resolution and image quality because of the closer contact of the esophagus with the cardiovascular structures. Convention for measurements of in echocardiography are inner edge to inner edge for the LVOT. However, for the, all the segments of the, of the aorta, the convention is leading edge to leading edge in diastole. CT angio is the standard diagnostic image modality for the thoracic aorta, taken from the carotid to the common femoral arteries. For repetitive images, it is recommended to use the same modality and measure diameters are reproducible anatomical landmarks. The maximum diameter must be measured perpendicular to the axis of the blood flow. CT or MRI measurement of the diameter are taken from outer edge to outer edge and uh, the route from the sinus to sinus as shown in this picture. The larger diameter should be considered the reference value. If patient is undergoing surgery, patency of the circle of willies and the coronary artery assessment is recommended. These pictures show normal diameters of different segments of the aorta. These varies according to sex, age, and the height of the patient. These nomograms are taken from the American Society of Echocardiography guidelines, which show the mean and standard deviation values. In this picture on the, on the top left, uh, we show the upper limits for a, a CT scan measurement. Although the diameter of the aorta is a major determin determinant of aneurysm rupture according to the Laplace law, not all dissections occur with the large diameter. A new study support the idea that the aortic length is a contributor of the aortic dissection, as shown here. An aortic length more than 11 centimeters is uh, increase the risk of aortic rupture. The classical hinge point of 5.5 centimeters for the ascending aorta has been reevaluated with the multi ethnic study of atherosclerotic database. This study showed that a diameter more than 4 centimeters increased by 89 the relative risk of rupture compared to the 3.4 centimeters normal value. And this increase is exponential uh, with more than 4.5 centimeters. The aortic size index have been described using different equations. However, the guidelines do not recommend any specific uh, type of index. And uh, instead, they still use uh, absolute cut point values. These are the risk factors for aortic dissections. If a patient has a syndrome or associated cardiac conditions, uh, such as uh, bicuspid aortic valve, aortic coarctation, or aortic dilation, syndromes associated with uh, uh, dissections or uh, aneurysms, family history of, of uh, relatives with aortic dissections or sudden death uh, younger than 50 years, or if the patient has already a diagnosis of an aortic aneurysm, is at high risk of a dissection. This table summarizes the current guidelines indication for surgical repair for aortic aneurysms. 
diameters have been decreased in high risk rupture for rupture cases uh, to 40 or 45 millimeters as shown here for syndromic and uh, this uh, Lloyd Dietz syndrome, which is at a higher risk of rupture. As shown in the past slide, bicuspid aortic valve has an increased risk of aneurysm formation and dissection. There are two phenotypes, aortic root and ascending aortic phenotype. Braden will approach this topic in another session. Multiple classifications have been proposed for the aortic dissection. On the left side, the classic DeBakey and Stanford classifications are shown, and in the right, the STS-SVS classification, which is a modification of the ERAT classification for acuity. The pain classification for aortic dissection uses the Stanford classification and add malperfusion and circulatory compromise to calculate the predicted morbid mortality. Malperfusion is an important prognostic factor for both type A and type B dissection, and this has been taken into account for the new classification in the 2024 guidelines. The functional analysis of the aortic valve concept highlights the interaction between the hinge points of the uh, implantation of the aortic cusps, the aortic sinuses, the sinotubular junction, and the proximal ascending aorta interaction for the competency of the valve. Dilation of these areas may affect co-optation of the aortic cusps, creating aortic regurgitation in a morphologically normal valve. Other mechanisms are, uh, of aortic regurgitation, uh, similar to the mitral valve regurgitation, are shown in this picture on the right side of the screen, which include perforation of the cusp, prolapse of the cusp, or restriction of the valve. A similar classification, but uh, adapted to type A aortic dissection is shown in this picture, and they added the, the D point in which the prolapsed slap may um, into susept into the aortic valve creating aortic valve regurgitation. The 2024 guidelines recommend the use of the Ishimaru landing zones for reporting the disease extent. The TEM, or type entry malperfusion classification strategy and the Girada score for the mortality risk assessment. The TEM classification uses a modified Stanford classification for the type of the dissection. Type A is when it extends to the ascending aorta. Type B when there is only extension to the descending aorta. And non-A, non-B when it compromises the aortic arch. The entry is subclassified as E0 where there is no entry point identifiable. E1, when the entry point is visible in the ascending aorta. M E2, when it is visible at the arch. And E3, when it is visible at the descending aorta. Also, M malperfusion is uh, subclassified as M0 or no malperfusion. M1, coronary malperfusion. M2, when it's compromised of the supraortic vessels. Or M3. Uh, when it's visceral malperfusion, positive with clinical si symptoms or negative with only uh, imaging diagnosis but no clinical manifestations. This is the Gerada score, which is the German Ger Registry for Aortic Dissections risk score, which is a practical and accessible tool for estimating 30 day mortality. Um, in patients with a type of aortic dissection and has been validated in multiple institutions. The Crawford classification for, for thoracoabdominal aneurysms continue to be used and they uh, still use the six centimeters hinge point uh, as the limit to classify the increased risk of rupture. Peter will present type 
B, aortic dissections and thoracic aneurysms. TE examination of the thoracic aorta has some limitations on image acquisition because of the limited angle manipulation with the TE probe and the location of the trachea in front of the esophagus and behind the uh, proximal ascending aorta and the innominate artery. That's why the combination of orthogonal views and different modalities such as 2D, M-mode, color flow Doppler, and 3D imaging will help with the accuracy of the diagnosis imaging and provide details relevant for the surgeons and the interventionist. Six transverse planes in blue here on this picture and four longitudinal planes in red are part of the comprehensive TEE examination. Again, a combination of orthogonal views and different modalities uh, will help with the uh, comprehensive examination. This is the first image uh, taken from a patient with a type A aortic dissection. You can see the dissection plan, uh, flap in the aortic root. The color flow Doppler is showing aortic valve regurgitation. There is a pericardial effusion and the ventricle looks hyperdynamic. So in a single image, image we can see uh, multiple diagnostic uh, points. This orthogonal color flow Doppler of the aortic valve shows a type A aortic dissection with, the, with two flaps in the uh, sinotubular junctions, anterior and posterior, and the flap is actually uh, protruding through the aortic valve, creating aortic valve regurgitation. This is the 3D imaging of the same patient demonstrating the posterior flap protruding through the valve. This upper esophageal long axis image shows the proximal entry of the color flow Doppler of the type A aortic dissection in the inner curvature of the proximal aorta with proximal and distal extension. The three image on the right confirm a typical horizontal flap. This young male with chest pain uh, consulted to uh, the emergency department and collapsed uh, quickly after his admission. Uh, he was found to have a severe dilation of the uh, proximal ascending aorta with aortic valve irritation and a large pericardial effusion. This is the uh, innominate artery cannulation here on this image and a large hematoma from the aortic root to the aortic arch, which is also uh, shown here on this uh, right side image. It's a large um, hematoma. This is the, the piece of the proximal aorta showing a very large uh, aortic tear, which was ruptured to the pericardium. This patient underwent to a, a mechanical ventil. This image is taken from a 48-year-old female passenger who had a motor vehicle accident. It demonstrates uh, uh, an intramural hematoma that starts distal to the subclavian artery in this left side video clip. And on, on the right, uh, you can see an intravascular, intraortic thrombi in some one with a large pleural effusion, which suggests traumatic aortic rupture. This non-conventional plane in the upper esophagus allows identification of the proximal neck vessels. Utilizing the same uh, technique, we confirm compromise of the innominate artery here. You can see the dissection uh, uh, in this type A aortic dissection case. This is another type A aortic dissection, which compromised uh, the left uh, coronary artery uh, ostium. However, the flow is uh, clearly visible with color flow Doppler and the continuous wave Doppler showed a normal diastolic flow. This um, uh, coronary didn't need to be intervened and it was resuspended the, the flap 
uh, with the correction uh, not requiring any cabbage. Sasaki um, described in detail the compromise of the coronary arteries in type A aortic dissection uh, using 3D and 2D images. TEE also helps guiding cannulation in the intraoperative period, in this case, confirming the guide wire and the cannula placement in the true lumen of the aorta. In the post bypass period, assessment of prosthetic valves and other prosthetic materials is important. Uh, in this case, uh, is a mechanical ventral uh, where it seems that the left ventricular function is at least mildly compromised. In open descending aorta repairs, surgeons may uh, need to do the venous cannulation from the uh, femoral vein advancing the wire and the cannula to the right atrium as shown in the left uh, video. And in the right side, uh, there is another uh, type of cannulation uh, for a, a, a case uh, with an um, uh, open uh, descending thoracic aorta, aorta surgery in which you can see the cannula, the venous cannula advanced from the PA um, to the pulmonic valve to uh, make the venous drainage. Finally, um, the aortic arch and the descending aorta are uh, now more commonly managed uh, with stents. And you can see in these cases, uh, there is a, a stent in the aortic arch and in the other uh, video on the screen, uh, there is a, um, a metal wire with a, a distal stent in the proximal abdominal aorta. In conclusion, current guidelines em emphasize standardization of diagnostic methods, measurements, and nomenclature for aortic pathologies. Intraoperative TEEs help with the diagnosis and guiding surgical correction for patients with aortic pathologies. Comprehensive TEE help identifying associated abnormalities, complications, for example, rupture, pericardial effusion, or ischemia. Thanks so much, Victor. So if you want to, you can serve as moderator for the rest of the sessions this afternoon, introducing the various speakers and then posting the Q&A at the end.